your regular schedule of Time Warp Radio to present a specially broadcasted bonus episode. <laughs> we're talking to uh, two guys that we're huge fans of that we talk about on our pod all the time. So we just, you know, we had to have you on and um, talk to you. We're talking to Ricky and Walter today. They're cast members of ours at Chaos and uh of mine at midnight insanity yes hey hello how are you guys doing you know we out here I, that is f- not enthusiastic enough <laughs> like, <laughs> i woke up at awesome. three o'clock this morning walter i woke up at three too but like in the bad way so how are you guys doing, you <laughs> doing? that's walter by the way and uh, ricky i'm, I'm- I'm Ricky. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> well, how long have you guys been shadow casting? Because I've known you for a few years, but I don't know how long your uh, Rocky Horror history spans. Okay, uh, I'll I'll go ahead and take the plunge. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I've uh, I've been going to Rocky Horror for like eleven years as like a as like a uh, audience member uh i've been shadow casting actually oh my god uh it's it's my fourth anniversary of shadow casting today like, this very week i think it, Aww. <laughs> Aww. this week uh although i don't really get to count the last year because i think we had like two shows <laughs> before coronavirus destroyed everything so we were at our very last show though so <laughs> i know i can't really say it's been four years technically because like uh, you know <laughs> there's been no rocky for, the, for the last year but four years uh i do chaos uh at the farida cinema and uh midnight insanity at uh, long beach love them both so how about uh, you ricky uh so <laughs> i've been doing it for um when did i start like 20 back when i was like 19 20 So it's probably been like three years going on four, I think. Somewhere I'm not very good with like, you know, keeping keeping up with the passage of time. Um, (laughs) so it's all it's honestly, it's all just been kind of a blur because it's Mm -hmm. just it it's just every week, you know, it it just feels like I've been doing it for my entire life. Yes. Because I'm so Mm -hmm. tired of it, but I still do it (laughs) because I love it. (laughs) You know, I'll 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 catch you up to speed. Uh, it's currently 2014. (laughs) <laughs> uh filthy frank is the biggest <laughs> on the internet <laughs> barack obama is president <laughs> Whoa. that is a time warp that's only oh my god six years ago seven, seven years ago seven thousand years ago feels oh like it my god but then what first got you into it Cause you're both so that you were not, wh- when had you first seen it then? I'll, I'll go first. Um, okay. So this girl I was dating back when I was like 19. Every single uh, time. It always starts with this girl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, in your <laughs> cases, I, you I, I was curious what maybe introduced you no, to the hobby. Yeah. So I was, I was dating this girl at the time and we were just at her, her dad, at her parents' place watching um, movies on her dad's laser disc uh, collection. Oh, yeah. And we, were, we watched uh, Moulin Rouge first. And then she was like, this movie is so much, this, this movie, I love it just as much as I, as I love Rocky Horror. And I was like, I have no idea what the fuck that is. So she didn't say anything. <gasps> she didn't say what it was. She was just like, all right, we're going to watch it. She, she put on the laser disc of Rocky Horror. And I, I had a, uh, 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 the first time watching it, as everybody, as everybody knows, is probably like the most confusing thing ever because yes. you just don't know what's going on at any point. <laughs> right. And just like everybody says, like, I thought I fell asleep in the halfway through it and I missed everything. 
and then the show just ended and I was like what the fuck did I just watch (laughs) and then so she was like this isn't the end you're not done yet because we're going to a show now he thought <laughs> you were like, off the hook just oh, watching it one time you hit the I was like, point. Oh, we watched we watched what do you what do you mean we're going to a show of it it's it's a movie you mean we're going to the movies right she's like no this is different mm-hmm. so we went we saw it and I laughed my ass off the entire time because it was so goddamn funny mm-hmm. all the callbacks it was it, I had never experienced anything like that ever mm-hmm. before in my life and it was just so so weird and strange and it was so fun and I'll and it was it was a great time it was it was a fun time I yeah. love that yeah uh, for me, oh man, well, this is, this goes in stages. So for me, the first time I saw it, um, my dad was really into cult movies and, uh, we were at his friend's house and he had a bunch of DVDs of different cult movies. I was like 12 and he was telling me about, uh, Little Shop of Horrors and he wanted me to watch mm-hmm. it. We dug through his collection. We could not find Little Shop of Horrors, but then we found the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And he's like, oh, this is another one of those cult movies. Uh, my dad was like really into Harold and Maude. That was his like, his thing. But- uh, No, my mom loves Harold and Maude too. She named her dog Maude. So oh, that's yes. cute. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so my dad was like Rocky Horror. Well, this is another one of those cult movies. Uh, I didn't really get as much into it, but uh, it's got horror in the name. It's it's basically Little Shop of Horrors. Like, uh, here you go. <laughs> he popped uh-huh. it in. First of all, that's not a movie for 12-year-olds. I saw... <laughs> <laughs> I saw the cover and I was like horrified. I was like, no, dad, this is too scary. I cannot, I cannot watch this. <laughs> he pops it in and it was like the worst fucking movie I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, why, why do the actors pause for five seconds in between each line of dialogue? You know, like, why? <laughs> why why is this so just atrociously edited who are these characters what the fuck is happening yeah like when it was over i was like oh my god the 70s fucking sucked i'm so (laughs) glad they only lasted a decade like (laughs) movies i'm never watching a movie from like before 2000 ever again i'm done (laughs) so uh years later years later uh around my 17th birthday, my friends were like, oh, we want to go do some edgy shit, but like only one of us is 18 and he can go to nightclubs and and buy cigarettes, <laughs> which, <laughs> and, and you nerds can't do anything. Uh, so <laughs> we were like, ah, oh, damn, we still have to do something edgy that a 17 year old can do that a 16 year old could not. And they were like, R rated movies. We can do that now. <laughs> and so uh, we, we uh, midnight screening of an R rated movie. All right, we're in, I show up and I'm like, I see the like marquee, it says the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I'm like, no guys, we have to- Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn us around. We gotta go. can't do it. <laughs> this movie's ass. Like we gotta, we can like, I'm calling my mom. <laughs> I want. <laughs> We're like, no, let's let's just do it. Let's just do it. Uh, and like, you know, we walk in. They do the pre-show. Uh, like, they this actual movie starts. The actors come on set, and I'm like, okay, let's see. Like, they're gonna act out this horrible movie and maybe do it just as badly as the real cast. Mm -hmm. But uh, when like, when people started yelling back at the screen, I was like, there we go, there it is. I was like, finally, cause like, there's seriously, there's so much time between each line of dialogue where they're like, Janet, I've got something to say. Like there's- (laughs) That was really good timing. That (laughs) That was pretty exact. There's exactly enough time to like talk shit at the screen. And I'm like, oh my God, talking shit is literally my only talent. So <laughs> I, uh, I got in there and I was like coming up with new callbacks like on the spot. And they were like, who is this guy? He must be a, a Rocky Horror super fan. And he's coming up with all these quips. Where What cast of those quips? So when I'm like, no, I hate this movie. I think, <laughs> I think uh-huh. it's 
but uh but it worked in my favor because uh like you know i got to talk smack so after that was done though i kind of i kind of got over it i went you know every couple of weekends for you know a few years and then uh then i just fell away from it then years later like the story always goes <laughs> i was dating this girl <laughs> <laughs> I was dating this girl <laughs> and she did Rocky Horror. Uh, you guys know her, uh, Jasmine from MI, but uh, or Chaos at the time. Um, and uh, one day they lost their Rocky. And, uh, you know, the people on the cast were like, hey, Jasmine, your boyfriend lifts weights. Do, <laughs> do you think he can learn how to be Rocky in about seven hours <laughs> in just seven you had, days you had seven you hours make a man but it's had seven, hours? Had seven hours in your case i had i had like a day and a half i'm exaggerating i had seven but... minutes i had <laughs> seven minutes <laughs> what the fuck i, I, I had some seven hours <laughs> i could not be brad after seven minutes god i'd fuck that up but uh i learned to do to do rocky over the course of like a day or two and um doable on stage and i was like oh my god this is so exciting i love Mm -hmm. i love attention i (laughs) i get to be naked and i don't need to come up with an excuse to like walk around (laughs) and in gold the short shorts i just do it and they're like yeah dude like it'd be weird if you weren't naked what the fuck (laughs) so i was like it's better than what i got which was you're you're a columbia right yes well, then you, you could do Eddie, right? When? Like next week? No, like t- tonight. You could you could learn Eddie because you're a Columbia, so you do hot oh patootie, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I did it. Is, is it happened. Like universal, is that like a universal thing where most people who join Rocky are like there for a little bit and then they just get thrown up on stage? Because yes, that's what course. happened to me. The, the, I was the gonna Rocky... ask what your first shadow casting experience was then. Yeah, I mean, I did I did Transylvanian for for a while at uh, MI, so I was kind <laughs> I knew I knew the movie, I knew like most of it, but I hadn't really practiced Rocky at that time. I had another, so I joined I joined with Emily. You you know Emily, Emily and Audrey. Yes, we all yes. joined at the exact same time. Um, because Emily dragged me along and she signed up. So she was like, Ricky, sign the fucking paper, you dumbass. I was <laughs> You're like, okay. joining too. Welcome <laughs> to the family. <laughs> I was indoctrinated by force and I'm still here <laughs> because I hate myself. Um, but <laughs> no, so uh, yeah, uh, I, me, Audrey, Emily, and another friend of ours joined and he was Rocky at the time because he was, I don't know, he, he liked, he was, he was a theater nerd, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm one night he just didn't show up so like an hour before the show they were like hey ricky put on these gold shorts and get your ass on stage and i was like what, what do i do it's just nothing just stand there and look pretty that, that that's all that's all rocky is he he just stands there looks pretty and then just gets led around by frank and, yeah. and that's pretty much it and that's, that's yeah what happens. rocky's easy like for as much like screen time as he has you're getting dragged around by frank for like at least half of it you know or like dragged around by janet <laughs> like somebody he grabs your hands you don't have to grab the titties yourself like (laughs) here's a quip i want to make okay a lot of times people will ask me about like uh doing touch a touch a which i i'm sure all our viewers are familiar with it but uh if you just randomly uh hit the bitly link that my spam bot sent to your email for this uh and you don't know what touch a touch a is it's the scene where janet and rocky have uh, uh simulated sex uh and uh <laughs> it involves real boob grabbing and yes. like people <laughs> people have asked me a lot of times like oh is that awkward like is it weird to like have fake sex with someone uh you know like you have a girlfriend don't you isn't that like awkward and i'm like no 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 the, the like fake sex part is like the least awkward part. The most awkward yeah. part of Touch a Touch is the like 15 minutes of direct eye contact while you <laughs> while you are completely silent and Janet is like <laughs> lip syncing and, and you just have to keep your mouth shut and just like <laughs> st- 
stare into her soul like that so like when, when you finally like get to the titty grabbing like that's like that breaks the tension it just it makes it less awkward i'm like finally i can look at her boobs instead of the <laughs> depths of her soul like this is getting this is getting way too human you know like <laughs> Please, I can't look into Haley's eyes for any longer. Please, I, I need a break. I need a break. <laughs> then when, then when you get to have like goofy fake sex, like that's when it's like, okay, we're just buddies. We totally yep. didn't fall in love while looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we're just bros, right? <laughs> and then you put on a horse mask and fake bone. It's great. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Walter. That and then you get that pillow talk behind her. the tank. It's oh. true though. Like nope, nobody ever talks about that though. Like people are so focused yeah. on fake sex. Like you don't know it's like, no, you don't understand what like that much direct eye contact <laughs> will do. <laughs> like dead silent eye contact is like no. Like <laughs> yeah, afterward, there's definitely like that was good, right? good yeah, you're good it's like good. that was like good you, they like that was, they, did they like it i don't know did we all have fun did they have fun that was pretty good like ricky and i'll high five yeah. <laughs> right put patty cake back there yeah just or like I'll, oh I'll yeah slide. like after touch a touch i like i'll always grab like lilith's bra and like you know string it over my head or some shit <laughs> oh my gosh i have a photo of that on our blog yeah. literally oh my God, yes it cracks me up so much i don't think it's lilith i think it's it might be Audrey, Audrey maybe might be Audrey but you have the it's face probably Audrey you have the the face that you do that mm -hmm. it's unfortunate we're we're a, a podcast format in this regard because if if you want to know what the face is go to our Instagram and find literally any photo of Walter because it's that face <laughs> <laughs> you just do a rocky face that's just so <laughs> like goofy and a, but aware that Rocky is goofy. Like you're, you show, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to be offensive in saying that we love all of your stupid faces. No, they, we they, love... are, they are definitely dumb. <laughs> I, uh, I, I am a cartoon character. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't have many friends growing up. So the only way I learned how to express myself was through the actual art of Japanese animation. <laughs> Uh -huh. I just <laughs> Walter. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. When I was a kid, I thought I I thought that like you know I was like oh cartoons in America use these goofy cartoony voices, but in Japan they, that's how they really talk. And I I didn't realize that they were also making cartoon voices. So I was like, this is like a way that people are. So I'd just be like, oh, I do all the facial expressions, that big like wide eye thing, like oh oh. <laughs> Katie Senpai, Yamate, Walter and I have definitely bonded over singing anime theme songs before. Oh <laughs> so now, now as an adult, the only way I know how to interact is by being an anime character, and, and fortunately, Rocky is basically uh -huh. he's basically a a hentai protagonist, you know. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> he does jack shit, except for make stupid faces and get into like sexual situations that like yeah you know like <laughs> he shouldn't be in, and yes. you the viewer aren't sure if he really likes it. <laughs> A seven-hour-old yes. child just yeah. concerned. <laughs> <laughs> problematic <laughs> born sexy born, oh, born no. too sexy <laughs> oh, okay I've been like dominating Ricky he's so <laughs> no, that's fine. No, I'm not the way I dominate him in bed he's just like <laughs> no I just, yeah I just take I just take it he's a lot louder when we do <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. He's the top. He's the top. <laughs> so, so then, Ricky, when you joined, you did Transylvanian, and then you did Rocky. We're forced mm -hmm. into Rocky. We're forced into Rocky. We're forced into Rocky. <laughs> yes. What other characters do you perform as? Well, as you know, I'm, I'm my main is Brad. 
Brad, mm-hmm. Brad's my boy. Brad, mm-hmm. Brad's my favorite. My favorite character, my favorite songs, my favorite moments are, are Brad because he's just a fucking doofus. And I love him <laughs> so much because that's just what I am. And it's so easy to be him because he's just so dorky. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Brad's my main. Um, I've done, I did Frank once. Uh, that, was in, that was an experience. Uh, I've done <laughs> Riff a couple times. I did Magenta once. And then I did, I did Columbia. Mm, you say I that as, as if it's a bad thing. Is there a story behind that? I, I did a glitter beard for 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 Columbia. That sounds great. Oh. It was awful because uh, <laughs> they didn't have we didn't have clear glue at the time, so oh. it was just like white paste all over my face <sighs> with uh, glitter sprinkled in, and it took me an hour and a half to get it out after the show. Oh, no. But and then it never was go really gone. It never was. No, there's. No. I still find glitter in my face all the time. <laughs> Seven hundred years later, there's glitter there. What is it? <laughs> oh, it's still what? <laughs> yeah, I I've done Columbia before too for for Homo Horror Night. The, yep. the yes. All male cast. <laughs> the I, shit yes. show, as Audrey and Emily like to call it. I mean, <laughs> they're not wrong. I they're not wrong dance. well i i, I just <laughs> but feel that's like, part uh, of the insanity and the hilarity of it like that's part of why you go to homo horror is to exactly. watch a bunch of guys that are usually really comfortable performing brad or rocky get thrown into other characters that i'd argue you guys know just as well as the primary characters you play because you're engulfed in the movie and like it's hard to not be aware of what's all happening of them at all the yeah. t- at all times yeah except for a few things because there were times when i was doing like columbia where i was like am i on the left of frank or the right like where you know mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff mm-hmm. the small things but uh yeah i mean yeah, but that's we're, forgivable we're sort of confident. it turns out i can't tap dance uh <laughs> <laughs> turns out <laughs> Turns out that your average Eddie is not strong enough to hurl <laughs> <laughs> to hurl beefman into the air. <laughs> My giant steroid body around. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding, listeners. I'm not really on steroids. It's a running joke. But like, I'm, I'm getting big enough where people are starting to believe it. So I need to like really <laughs> make that. Well, clear. it's it's doubly a shame that we're not a uh, video format right now because the background <clears throat> of your Zoom chat is slabs of what looks like bacon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I feel like Homo Horror is way a way bigger shit show than the all female show on uh, Daiki. Oh Horror. yeah. Just because, like, the, this the, the, way, the ladies, the ladies know what they're doing. The way the, that theater the, is, like, the, the oh, male yeah. to female ratio in theater kid land, uh, is is <laughs> pretty skewed. <laughs> so, like, I I see girls playing Brad all the time just because they gotta. They we just don't have a dude to play Brad, you know, yeah. or Frank, like, all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, pretty much everybody but Eddie, and even then, you know, mm-hmm. like, there's I've seen so many like female Brads and like. When's the last time you saw a male Janet not on Homer Horror Night? Like, I was gonna ask when the last time you guys moonlit as Janet was. Homo Horror Night, two thousand nineteen <laughs> or eighteen, I think. I think the last I time ne- that I had a male Janet was Mike Stimson. At mm-hmm. some point in the last, like. For maybe Chaos's birthday show? Yeah. I th- or maybe. I think it was Ray's birthday show. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And I it was Mike that. Mike Stimson, and he was amazing, as he always is. Like Ricky, you've Janet. never been Janet? I've never played Janet. <gasps> I've never Janet Janet's so fun. Like, I love Ricky, first we all, should switch one time, and I'll be uh, your yes, Brad, and yes, you'll be my yes, Janet. Yes, 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 yes. Please. Oh, my gosh. That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be so That'd be really much fun. fun. <laughs> because, okay. Ricky, you crack me up because, like I you try, said, I try. I do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, and you bring so it's like you have a level of dedication when you're performing that. Um, I don't know. You, it's so fun to just like riff off of you. There's a lot of opportunities that like Brad and Janet can improv, and I think bring the audience into the absurdity and into the movie. And yeah. it's so fun to do that with you. 
that's that's what I that's what I kind of like to try to do is like so when I first started out I was like learning the role and 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 perfecting it basically and then once you start to get like comfortable then you can start throwing in like your own jokes like the water thing with the, oh my the gosh, spray the water. which is my which is my favorite bit now that's my favorite like, bit because sometimes people people in the audience can't see that I do that for like the people up close and specifically for the Janet because <laughs> I'll just emerge from the darkness off the floor covered in water but it's screen it accurate it, because exactly, your glasses are just time. completely fogged over <laughs> and it cracks me up and ah oh, it's so good it's so good it I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because when when the when the performance when the performers are having fun, then the audience is having fun. That's the yes. way that I see it. Yes. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. The best part of being Janet is being on the other side of that fucking rainbow tank <laughs> and getting my titties touched for once. Yeah. So then the Rocky has to like be quiet while while I talk to him, you know, and make <laughs> him stare into my soul. Like, <laughs> I've only ever kissed before. Don't look away. Don't look away. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't look at me. No, no, no. Look you're, at me. You're... <laughs> look at me. Look at my soul. Look at me. I'm demanding constant eye contact right Ravage now. Ravage me, Rocky. <laughs> Fuck me for real. <laughs> See, I like to turn the tables on the Janet when I'm Rocky, and I like to just make the dumbest faces I possibly can while I'm staring into her soul, because I know that she has to stare back at me. So I like to do like. <laughs> oh my god! I wish I wish the audio listeners could see that face. Like but... the Jim Carrey like lip tuck. Oh yeah, that god. like where it's uh, just all teeth. That Ace Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> I just that... like to do like the dumbest faces that I can think of to try and break the Janet because it's like you like to make me feel uncomfortable. Well, I can do the same to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So Ricky said that Brad is his favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Walter, who is your favorite then? Obviously Rocky, uh, because okay. I, I'm just too bad of a actor and to, I'm just too stiff and robotic. And I'm so glad that Rocky is like a little robot. Like I can't do the kick mm -hmm. line. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I skipped stretching day for the last 50 years and I'm so glad he, Peter <laughs> Is as much of a himbo in real life as like me <laughs> you know it's like that guy couldn't dance either like he he was fucking up the kick line so when i fuck up the kick line it's screen accurate and i'm so happy i'm like look at me i'm a screen accurate actor ha 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 little little do they know i just suck i <laughs> oh, gosh but uh, no, my real favorite show, the, my real favorite role is pre-show. I love doing pre-show. Oh my god! Like it's it's yes. so it's so fun. Like you get to do whatever. You know, there's no there's no script. I don't have to be screen accurate. You know, mm -hmm. you, you get to test out your new jokes every week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we got our first little taste of pre-show at the drive-in last month. Oh, mm -hmm. it was not as terrible as I expected it to be. Well, so we're talking to like cars, right? At the drive-in. And I felt <laughs> like I was in the movie Cars. And so she yeah, said, I, know, right? I feel like I'm in the movie Cars. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Literally, because it was just like a bunch of like, and I'd be like, hey, Who's excited to see Rocky Horror tonight? I don't know anybody in the cars. I don't know any of you. And the flashing, the headlights, yes. I had a question since both of you perform as Rocky. Mm -hmm. Do you Shoot. think with Eddie, like, thoughts and Eddie consciousness... Or where does Eddie live in your brain when you're performing Rocky? Eddie? Rocky lives in my brain. <laughs> but Rocky's brain is Eddie's brain. Oh, I never thought half. of that. Half. 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 I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Neither did I. I, ne I never mm. thought about that until I started listening to you guys' podcast. And I was like, oh. Interesting. I'm curious. If, if um, then Rocky knows more to it because he's like he was witnessing it in some regard. I don't know. I'm just I'm just a himbo. 
That's just, <laughs> there's nothing in my brain. But, uh, no thoughts. I have a question um, because you both said that you hate the movie. Oh, it's horrible. I it's don't so hate bad. the movie. I think, because I, I want to know if you would say that you love the movie if it's I, like I so it. close to your heart that it's just like it doesn't even matter if I like it anymore it's yeah. not that I hate the movie it's just that I think it's bad you know and something doesn't have to be good for you to like it mm-hmm. you know like I like Artemis Fowl <laughs> and those, those books were bad and the, <laughs> Hello, anybody, anybody in my age group, group who was uh, too cool to read the Harry Potter books uh, should know. <laughs> if you discovered it through the film, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> those books were really bad. I, I went back and like reread them as an adult and I'm like, oh my God, what, <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> but I love them. Uh, Rocky's like that. I love Rocky. Cause it sucks. Mm-hmm. Like that's why. If it was like slightly better, I couldn't like it because then I I wouldn't be able to make fun of it anymore. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be having like a goofy time. Like imagine if Rocky Horror had like a a, a plot. <laughs> you know. I mean. That would ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't apply filmmaking to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ricky, tell me your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I love the movie because of how how weird it is. It is it is a strange amalgamation of whatever fucking aesthetic that is. Um, mm-hmm. Fucking, I, I I just I just I just it's it's kind of hard to put like my thoughts into words about the movie because of how like. It's it's, mm. ha. it's like part. It's like part of me. I'm now, making you, know? you. I'm making yeah. you put it into words because I have asked you to be <laughs> on my I podcast. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Falling right in your trap, but it, it's 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 become like a part of of me. You know, like I've spent however many years fucking coming around to fucking Long Beach and in anaheim or wherever Mm -hmm. chaos is i don't know Um, (laughs) yeah every saturday every every single saturday like that's that's what my saturdays were like i would i'd be like oh i I gotta take off work i'm gonna go be up until two o'clock in the morning again um yelling (laughs) at a screen in front of a couple hundred people Uh that was that was just my weekends you know and 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 i miss i miss that a lot i I really do like the, the whole COVID thing has just made me realize how much I love that movie and and the the community surrounding it, just how fun everybody is and just, just you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I completely know what you mean. Rocky's yeah. lasted 40 years, so it'll last another 40 more. <laughs> we'll be, you know, like, I'll, I'll be yeah. like taking my grandkids to this show and I'll be like, this shit traumatized me. You're, you're next. And it's your turn now. <laughs> your turn now. <laughs> you're 12. It's time. It's time. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. I, I also wanted to know to what level I ask myself this uh, all the time with Katie present. What is reality when you are on a shadow cast? <laughs> like, Nothing. it's you have to be. There's like a its own level of metaphysics going on of being like <laughs> I'm performing a live show that's also supposed to be exactly like what's going on behind me, and I also need to know the jokes that are coming, and I also need to like react to the jokes and be in character and like sell it, make it believable. And like the people in the audience are sometimes having such a similar experience to Brad and Janet. Like mm-hmm. they're totally right. out of their element. They're, they've been dragged there by their girlfriend who <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. And that then by the end dating. of it, they're like questioning if they enjoyed the experience, you know? <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> same <laughs> no I loved it I loved it because I got to yell at the screen and I love yelling that's the only time I'm like really happy 
is <laughs> when I'm screaming. And normally people are like, calm down. You know, and I mean, like at Rocky, they're like, no, this is good. This is good. <laughs> Say something stupider. Say like, <laughs> Rocky doesn't only like emotionally change people it it physically changes them like people who join Rocky casts just physically become louder people and <laughs> you guys have you guys realize that yes yes yeah, that, no. that's what happened are you, to, that's what are happened you saying to me. that people become uh self-confident and more comfortable in themselves through this yes. through this experience I, I mean I guess that's a way to put it I and like they're more too. able to express themselves and I'm keeping I just, be themselves. I just like I just like become louder, you know. <laughs> it keeps yeah. me in shape because I would know that like once a month I have to be like practically naked on stage. So if you know if I get out of shape, then I'm like, oh no, that's terrible. I can't let that happen. I, I have to be naked on on next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or mostly yeah. naked, close to naked. Rock, let's be real. Rocky doesn't really have a costume. Like his costume is nudity. Like I, I, I like bring my entire costume in a grocery bag, and other people have like <laughs> suitcases. And I'm like, yep. yeah, I have this like little like golden man thong, and I, <laughs> I'm set. I'm mm -hmm. done. And a dance bell, right, Walter? Yes, that's my. It's Good. my fitspo. No, I didn't get Dude, the dance bell. My until my two dudes, years in. my dudes. Two years if, to get if you're if you're doing Rocky. Buy a dance belt. Don't that is, that a is dance the one don't requirement. Listen don't listen no, let no, fuck you, out. Walter. No, this Walter. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Please, please, please buy a balls. dance belt. No. Balls no, Walter. spilling out on the kick line. <laughs> no, Walter. Walter, you <laughs> are wrong. From getting your nipples touched fully okay, visible. Okay, but Walter, counter counterpoint. You're wrong. Uh, hi, <laughs> put that shit away. People came to watch a movie, not your dick and balls flying around. Oh, okay. No, they... <laughs> I know what they came for, Ricky. And <laughs> it did not come balls. for dick and balls, okay? No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I wear the dance belt, uh, not to hide it in my gold shorts, but because, like, every time I do the kick line, I used to, like, always get super paranoid that, like, my whole junk would just fall out, where I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. man, like, the elastic on these shorts, are, I don't know. I don't know if I trust them enough to hold back, like, the whole package, you know? So, like, I would do, like, this half-hearted little kick where I wouldn't raise my legs all the way up, like... During the like, uh, you know, when you guys are all in the on the floor, in the pool kicking scene at the end, yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah, and you're like fucking taint is pointed straight at the crowd, like that. <laughs> that is when I fear a disaster the most. Like that's when I'm grateful for the dance belt because I'm like, if I kick with like a little too much enthusiasm, like this shit is coming off. Like <laughs> my balls will fling to the back row with the just sheer force of these kicks. I will knock somebody the fuck out as my balls retract and decapitate 27 people, half of them virgins. <laughs> Me, when I forget to wear my tights and I'm like, this is the night that I'm gonna have a lip slip. This is it. Oh the, oh, no. the amount of times people have like looked at me like as we're lying down on our backs, just like with fear <laughs> in their souls being like, <laughs> I, I, Dude, I don't know. Like, that, if there's a god out there, just please keep everything in place. We that's just like yell, "It's almost show. over!" Yep. It's again almost and over. again, it's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> the only it's part of the show over. that I ever feel insecure during is like it's like gooch to the front. Like everything else, I can deal with. Even the like prolonged eye contact, I can deal <laughs> with. Like gooch front and center i'm like no take take the spotlight off me please my please <laughs> don't have the spotlights anywhere near me Frank, my dance out. belt can only Get take so much <laughs> piece of advice as someone who has played all four of the floor show characters pivot your pelvis downward towards the stage as opposed to straight towards the audience yeah, okay. do, if you want if you want a core workout do some butterfly kicks instead Yep. You know? <laughs> Pro That's what I do. This is the uh, how to protect your balls and uh, <laughs> maybe a podcast. This is a, I appreciate this because we haven't talked about um, the male's experience doing Rocky Horror at all because uh, Katie and I just can't speak to it. So yeah, we I'm glad. <laughs> Can I speak on the issue? Because it's a oh, very yes. strange world coming into as a male with no like experience in female clothing. And that's yes, what absolutely. like a lot of the, sh like especially floor show, I had no idea what a dance belt was. 
I'd seen corsets. I had never put one on before. And that was an experience. Fish, mm-hmm. Like walk, walking into a sex shop and being like, hey, I, I need a pair of your biggest fishnets. Like, are these for your girlfriend? Like, <laughs> no, oh. these are from these are from me. Here's That's here's here's, you could here's my cast card. You could say, yeah, it is. Oh, for fuck my... that. No, <laughs> I show up, I show for up me. And I'm like, take me to the plus size women's <laughs> section. And they're like, oh, do you know your girlfriend's measurements? And I'm like, Bitch. here, you got any? <laughs> First of all, look at these thick thighs. <laughs> Tell me, do you do you have fishnets for a man who squats 400? You go <laughs> like. <laughs> But you were saying, so like, yeah, you have to buy all of these women's clothes that yeah. you, uh, I don't know if you guys were doing that beforehand, but uh, you started officially doing it for Rocky Horror. <laughs> and <laughs> like, yeah, tell me about it. It was, I had, I had Audrey to help me out a lot. And, and you both know she is a costuming genius, her yes. and Emily especially. And so they, they basically held my hand. And, and did everything for me, you know, <laughs> because I was I was just a little baby, not knowing what the fuck I was doing. No, you were like, their their Ken doll. They were like, yeah, I, <gasps> I was their little golden retriever, and they were dressing me up and throwing me on stage and prancing me around in front of everybody. That, that's, <laughs> that's what it was like. And and if if you're joining a Rocky cast, find find those two people who are yep. like. What you need a corset? All right, I'll throw a zipper on there for you. Oh, you need some fishnets? All right, here's here's the store I go to. All that stuff. They'll they'll help you. Ask for help. Don't. I mean, if you can do it on your own, great for you. But if you need help, ask for it. Yes, absolutely. because everybody loves it and wants to like. If if we can get more people to do Transylvanian, fuck it. Yeah, how can I help? What, let me get let me find you let me look on all of the sites that I can to find you a tailcoat like or I mean 95 out of 100 times uh, somebody on cast will have something yep yes yeah. that's another thing that I've learned mm-hmm. I've been saved before <laughs> oh yeah last minute somebody being like here Katie save me like <laughs> sent me some gold shirts I'm like these are flexible enough for my <laughs> Juicy, juicy. (laughs) I mean, honestly, to be fair, most of the time when I find really good, like Rocky shorts or Rocky uh, paraphernalia, it's all stripper wear. So it's meant to be flexible. Like all of it is like made for strip clubs. And you're like, great, perfect. You can, you know, rock a pole in this. Great. That's what I need. I don't know. I've broken my share of stripper heels on the Rocky stage. So <laughs> do do not buy stripper heels. Those no, are way- go to Payless. Go to Payless. <laughs> Get go a to, sensible go- pump. <laughs> Literally, go to go to fucking Goodwill. Go to the oh, women's yeah. section. They will have a tiny pair of heels in your size. I swear to God. Mm-hmm. Just black I'll heels. Yeah. Yep. Walter loves those putting those heels on for floor right. show though. That's I so see funny. you put them on. <laughs> I'm about to die every time too. Like, it's like, who's this six foot seven guy? And I'm like, oh, ha, ha, I'm just wearing stripper heels. Like, who's I think like the first time you saw me, and then they're like, who is this fucking giant? <laughs> I turn around and it's me, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> like, do you guys feel weird putting on women's clothes? Are you like? Or are you like, this is awesome? Nah. I, I, <laughs> I did it first, but then I was like, this is no big deal. You know, because it's, it's, sure. it's, it's just it's just clothing. And I know people say that all the time, like, oh, it's just clothing. It doesn't matter, like, if it's female. Clothing is clothing, literally. Mm-hmm. That, it's, yeah. it's, and, and sentence, clothing is clothing. Yes. Yeah. I, Absolutely. Uh, I never had a problem with it. I... I don't think I get to be insecure about my manhood. Like, I feel like once, once you can bench press like more than 300 pounds, like you, you just don't get to feel insecure anymore. So you- <laughs> nice I wouldn't flex, go, I would, Walter. I wouldn't nice go flex. that far. I wouldn't go that far. Cause I can't, I, uh, I don't even know how much I can bench press and I, I don't give a shit. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm just not allowed to be insecure about it. Is there's like a rule at that point. Like, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> once uh, like, but I, but way before Rocky, I, I would wear women's clothes. Um, my sister was a dancer in high school 
and like one time they did this like show where they wore these like really like kind of kind of like I don't know cabaret looking costumes sure and she only wore it once for the show and I was like Grace it's mine now it's <laughs> there's like a slutty little like leg slit on it and my like leg just pops out of so like when I was like like 18 19 years old I used to like go out with my friends out to like uh, second street in long beach and i would like get the dress on get <laughs> get huh? some uh, new balance sneakers on <laughs> get a, a fat fucking cigar and like, <laughs> start talking like this and i i i was a weird we i'm still weird what but I, <laughs> So I'd go down the streets like on second street and I'd go up to people that were like at the open air restaurants that are like all over that street. And I'd just be like, Hey, you want to smoke a cigar? You know? And like, <laughs> and I'd like put my cigar in people's faces and like see if could smoke it. <laughs> Ricky, what's your, you said you, all of your favorite stuff is Brad stuff. What's your yeah. favorite Brad song and scene? Damn it, Janet. Easy, okay. easy pick. Damn it, Janet. I love it. I love performing it as well because that's like, that's the scene where I get to run around the most and do the mm -hmm. most like active stuff because mm -hmm. I just, it, it's fun to just run around, throw around Janet, diving down on the floor, being all goofy and, and shit, being like, oh, it, well, you want to marry me? You know, that kind of shit. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. I, I love it. And the song is fantastic. Just like, all the callbacks for it too are hilarious. I feel yeah, I feel like all all most of the best callbacks are in like the first twenty to thirty minutes of the movie, because that's when everybody's like the most engaged. Yeah. And then once it hits dinner scene, everybody kind of like ramps down, and then at the end it comes back up. You know. That's yes. the best part though is when it ramps down because that gives you the chance to like come up with something original. You know. Yeah. It's like, and you know, it's you know, dead. You know. And it's dead quiet. It's dead quiet too, so everybody can hear it. Cause like you can never come up with like an original thing for like a uh, science fiction double feature just because everybody yeah. knows every single com come back and it's like carved into stone but like for the rest of the yep. movie like mm -hmm. you know like w once you hit like the you know after touch a touch a like quiets down a little and then like <laughs> you can go crazy you just like <laughs> just pull out a loudspeaker <laughs> and scream it. there's a oh. certain point you hit when you've been going to rocky so many times that you have callbacks to the callbacks in the show yes. that's when you know you're a vet like all all <laughs> like 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 dirty dirty fucking uh he, sean doherty i think his name, last name is pronounced he has some of the funniest fucking callback callbacks i've ever heard in my entire life meta callbacks <laughs> what is reality <laughs> hmm? <laughs> is, is that a question no, i mean once... i posed it earlier but we kind of Got side I mean, yeah. no one knows how to answer that question. I don't know Haley. how to answer that either. <laughs> are you, are you talking about like reality is an illusion? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. I'm okay with that. Uh, then, do you have any favorite scenes or songs, answer. Walter? Touch a touch. -a. If uh, if you can survive the 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 eye contact, uh... <laughs> touch a touch -a is is great. And I, I hate leading off with this because, like, I hate it when, like, I talk about my love of Tatcha Tatcha to, like, fucking pervs. And they're like, hey, you get to touch a different set of titties every week. And it's like, hey, shut, shut up. That's not the point. Like, that's not the point. No, no. what I love about Tatcha Tatcha is um, during the whole, like, creature of the night, you know, that, that part. <laughs> like, it's still your scene, but there's nothing to be screen accurate to. Yes. So you can do whatever you want. And that that like 30 second span of touch a touch -a is the best part of the show because you can do what the fuck ever you can have like acrobatic fake sex with your friends and it's so much fun <laughs> to, to, like uh the, the show that we did uh in i think apple valley yes uh, yes 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 by janet you were by the way you're such a fun janet where like we Thanks. had two rockies two Thank rockies you. one janet so we got to like 
toss you around and you were like so light especially between the two of us we could like flip you upside down and like pass you around between one rocky to the next and it's just like that none of that's in the movie and we we made it all up uh-huh. like, so much fun like, yes so that's yeah i love tacha tacha it's it's so much fucking fun well I love that you brought that up because I was thinking about the Apple Valley show recently Mm -hmm. one of the best shows I've ever been in for real oh my gosh a blast absolute blast um if you don't know where Apple Valley is in California you should look it up because it's a teensy tiny town and it is like any other teensy tiny town that you're like driving on your way from Flagstaff to California or like to Mm -hmm. Utah like it's a super tiny town and we did it as like a one-off special event at literally a bar that had a patio with a we brought I think we brought our own screen even I think so and projector because it was sponsored by the Frida so like they had the right equipment for it but I, I digress literally this bar was packed full of people, full of people that this is a town in the middle of nowhere came to go to Rocky Horror. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I loved it. It was so packed. I was amazed. Like, great, great crowd. Like, ah, I would do it again. I want to go back there. Can we? Yes. Are we allowed? It's open air. It's open air. It's socially distanced. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I would entertain the idea of going back to that venue just in general because oh my gosh and they and they were so appreciative too of like because you know Janet runs away during I think I went to go get like water at some point and I had a couple people stop me and just like it's so awesome that you guys are out here like we haven't seen Rocky Horror in 20 years but as soon as we saw that this is happening like we bought Mm. tickets we had to be here it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I loved it. I think we've reached what might be Ricky's most anticipated segment, which yes. is we're going to all put on our tin foil right now. <laughs> we're all putting it on collectively. We should simultaneously on our on our foreheads for our conspiracies. Okay. I want to know <laughs> what uh well okay i have i have questions regarding my own conspiracy theories i didn't know if you guys had your own so your theories one one there's one specific theory that that kind of turned me in to what what's going on in my brain right now and it and it has a big it has a big part in my overarching conspiracy theory okay Tell I me. don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, we got to. Let's, let's that, build up. Okay, ask us your yeah. questions, okay, okay. and then like Ricky's nugget that like he's blew primed. My mind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Yeah. Okay. So, do you guys? Um, we talk about the Denton Affair pages, mm-hmm. and I uh, consider them canon. Do you guys consider them canon? That's from um, from shock treatment, right? The or am I? No, oh, the, the the Denton affair uh, that cr- the criminologist references. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, the... yeah. That's well. The criminologist is canon. So I know, but like, if you can't read the pages sitting there as an audience member, how good is the information? Or like, are we at the point that like that's valuable because Brian Thompson put thought and energy into these statements that like? No, nah, if it's on he screen, saw, it's canon. If it's on screen, it's canon, straight up. It doesn't matter if it's for like five seconds or five minutes. It's canon. But all right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually looked into the Denton Affair. Because it's the, sure. like, it's the statements, the the statements Brad and Janet make, uh, and Dr. Scott. We can believe then that Janet is pregnant at the end of the movie, um, in uh, addition yes. to... Dr. Scott being, uh, he like references his German history. There's questionable stuff about him being able to walk 
that sort of stuff. Okay. I find it fucking hilarious. I didn't know that the only reason that Dr. Scott was in the wheelchair was because he slipped on a banana. Right? <laughs> right? Oh my Janet's God, is dude. the There's most so interesting. This... How um, have I never read this? Okay, how about... Okay, how okay about it's just gibberish after a while. Let's go back to this to the the actual podcast and just treat us like virgins and give us like the explanation from your end because like this, yeah this is a, this is a tome okay. yes so in janet's statements uh at the end she alludes to having like morning sickness and other pregnancy symptoms which would mean she ends up impregnated by frank or rocky or even mm. like I don't know, Brad could be tossed into that ring, Whoa. you know? Because yeah, also, the, the well, okay, scene, I have so those. many thoughts. <laughs> yeah. What would you think of, of that being the end of Janet's story and that being the way it happens? See, yeah, Janet being pregnant by, uh, by Rocky or by Frank. I could see that. She's carrying a little little alien fetus in her, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. for sure. I I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I feel like I feel like they were trying to go for that. Maybe they're trying to set up a sequel, like, oh, I'm pregnant with an alien, and then mm-hmm. and then, then in shock treatment they forgot that anything ever happened for some reason. <laughs> well, on. there's like, <clears throat> I've thought about it, and I don't know. Um, I don't know how much of a of an option Janet considered abortion, if that is the case, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how maybe she did have an abortion following the events of the movie and shock treatment is also the result of that occurring in their life. I don't know. I, I don't think anything that happened in Rocky Horror really affected shock treatment. Like, I, I don't even consider it like a real sequel. You know, it's more okay, like a- Okay, okay, but what if? What if though? Okay, hear me out. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Janet in 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 shock treatment is Janet in the first movie's baby. Nah, no. But what about <laughs> get the fuck out of here, Ricky? That's the, worst, <laughs> that's the worst theory I've ever heard. There, that Janet was like, Junior. Right? <laughs> Janet <laughs> Junior. Yeah, and Brad Junior. Janet Junior. And their brother and sister. Get the fuck out of here, Ricky. <laughs> but what if? Hear me out. Brad and Farley are Janet's are children. The two? And then their parents died in a car crash. <laughs> and I was the real Brad and Janet. Well, because oh. the, uh, the other thing I'm thinking, treatment. so yeah, forget about shock treatment. If at the end of the movie, what if it was all a dream? Okay. And no. Wait, 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 wait. And yeah, no. <laughs> it was all a dream. Okay, and on. Brad and because okay, imagine being a criminologist and taking a statement like Brad and Janet's, where they're going off about they got a flat tire and then all of this crazy nonsense occurred, with the result being them like in a questionable situation for at the time, like if they were hooking up in the backseat of their car and or if they died in that car and that was all just <laughs> and they're stuck Boo. in like a purgatory and they're and stuck Ash in like a... was in a coma <laughs> and... <laughs> no i i hate fan theories that are always like it's it was all in their head because it's like yeah no that's you could, you could say that about literally anything ever you know it's yeah. like and also i hate it when movies do that for real you know like the twist in fight club <laughs> i was like Pfft. <laughs> you can't talk about that here. We're gonna edit that out. <laughs> I can't make my Walter. fight club. I'll, dude, I'll throw hands. I I hate the second <laughs> half of that movie. I hate. I love the first half. <laughs> the first half is great. Of course you do. And they were like <laughs> the mayhem. Right. <laughs> I mean, oh like, God. since Meatloaf is also in that movie, we have talked a little bit about Fight Club on this <laughs> yeah. show. Mm-hmm. His name was Robert Paulson. His <laughs> name oh is Robert Paulson. Yeah. But yeah. so then if Janet does wind up pregnant, Ricky, mm-hmm. who do you think she ends up I, pregnant by? Honest? Okay, if I had to pick, I definitely think it would be Rocky. 
because okay. of that weird sequence that we get when they're like fucking of it like cycling through everybody's like faces mm-hmm. i don't know the kind of connection i can make there but that that's just that's just completely it's like completely different than when she fucked frank right there was like yeah. there was there was something going on there that i don't fully understand which mm-hmm. makes it feel like you know you know yeah. what i mean no i get what you mean because there's also i've uh talked about it from like a biological standpoint that I'd hope the human biology would not allow an alien impregnation to occur. Is that a word? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> For that I mean, to occur, you know, and then it would make sense why Frank <laughs> is making a muscle man to then be anatomically and biologically compatible with procreating with the female human. Yeah, okay. I think it's Rocky, and I'll tell you why. I, uh, I'm i pretty sure, like, what the only thing they really show on screen is uh, is Frank giving Janet head. And uh, when she's with Rocky, she's like, oh, I'm a virgin, right? Right? I don't think it was Frank, but her and Rocky fucked. Like, they <laughs> fucked. <laughs> it's more, it's so like Frank, it is implied, like you, you don't see the resolution to their screen, their yeah, like scene together. Her little head, you know. <laughs> right, and versus like, Rocky, it's not as much implied as it is. Um, like, they come up butt ass naked, like yep. they were laying, they were fucking horizontal there, like that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they, and they, they change were, sides. He fucking, gets on top of her. Were, <laughs> I know yeah. he's right. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they confirmed full penetrative sex with Rocky. <laughs> also, Rocky Horror is like a man created in a lab for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to fuck. Like that dude's cum must be like potent. That must be well, like okay. weapons yes. grade fucking light speed that. sperm cells swimming at a hundred miles an hour like rocky must like he could probably get me pregnant fuck like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, let because, him <laughs> because if he yes if frank knows that's the ultimate mission is impregnate the species because for whatever reason on transylvania they have reproduction issues and um, Frank also realizes if I make a walking sex doll, I yes. can take advantage of that for how I know I'm going to enjoy receiving pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Or like because he like, can do whatever he, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's also really into humans. He's like a weeaboo for humans, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like I don't even know if he has a penis because like the elbow sex thing implies that their genitals are in their elbows right Ooh. and and Frank goes straight for the crotch like you know he's he goes he, like that's that's what he's about you know <laughs> so that's so, true my money's on Rocky Rocky's the father this is it. <laughs> I'm just thinking about elbow genitals and it's <laughs> gross in the population. Out. What would they look like? Is this like hot? This. I don't know. Are like you talking that. about what do Transylvanians look like? Because like I asked genitals. myself that too. <laughs> I also asked myself that. Because if they're shapeshifters, we've had a, f- what would you think they look like? We've had a few like interpretations. Yeah, like we've got the, Sim- the aliens from The Simpsons. So they're just like, which, okay, if they are like, like octopus creatures, imagine going suction cup to suction cup with another octopus and going with an octopus. Interesting. Okay. (laughs) Katie's face is, I'm uncomfortable (laughs) thinking about it because like, (laughs) it makes me want to vomit, dude. I think Transylvanians, they're, they're just like, humans with crazy ass hair you know because like when uh when riffraff and uh, magenta or yeah magenta show up at the end like that's their true form it's like it's me but my hair is silly they're super <laughs> saiyans they're just super saiyans you know yeah exactly 
if they're just trying to assimilate to whatever culture they've been exposed to, and they just know that this is what alien uh, or what like sci-fi characters look like to these people, I'm going to show up as a Flash Gordon character because they'll understand that I'm an alien. I'm an alien. Yeah. I have a theory, and, and this has been bugging me, me since episode one, when you guys were talking <laughs> about the Transylvanians and the flags and the food. You guys remember yes. that? Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. a theory that Transylvanians are, are just dumb. They just can't do anything right. <laughs> they, like okay. they, they try, They're, they've been trying to learn. They've been trying to do these like things and these experiments and stuff, but they just, they just can't do it. They get it just a little wrong. Riff Raff fucks up the entire movie. He can't do anything right. He doesn't know when to stop fucking cranking the shit. He, uh, he doesn't know how to fucking set a table. Magenta doesn't know how to clean a fucking house. They, they can't do anything. They're, they're, they're yeah. hopeless. They're the morons. They, they can't use the noisemaker. It just gets stuck, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> that, was, that was a deliberate choice by Richard O'Brien. Yeah. Exactly. Like, fuck up the noisemaker. Don't. <laughs> You're not familiar with this kind of tool, okay? Just, just shake it. Just yeah, shake do it. what you think a Transylvanian would do with it. Yeah, exactly. What, yeah. what a human would do. What does a human do with this? Yeah, they just shake it like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah it no makes way. noise, right? Just that's aggressive it. shakes. <laughs> but that's a good point that you make up, uh, that you bring up, because even in Floor Show, um like when we get the shots of the ballroom that banquet spread is still there yeah it's just all nonsense food there's no rhyme or reason to it nonsense food matched with flags that don't go with the food that they're stuck in like mm -mm. just random things mm -hmm. random shit is brad in on it the whole time no. does he is he working with dr scott and knew that the castle back there had an assignment that he needed to complete. So he crashed the car on purpose. Interesting theory. I, I, I'm not, I don't think that, but I want to, I want to see you try and sell me on it. <laughs> it's so bizarre that Dr. Scott shows up that night. And it's, it's honestly, it's more bizarre that Brad and Janet show up because mm. like, at least Dr. Scott, if he had that note and was en route to investigate where his missing nephew was, like that connects him to the castle. And then I don't think, I don't know. I want to, I want to make Brad smarter than he is because- Keep Well, on. and I think what, what came up, <laughs> I think what like had brought us to this theory originally was the it's something we ourselves have been working on. And he like says it directly yeah. to Brad as in like, this is our, this is the plan that we've been doing. Like, you know, <laughs> that secret military operation that you've been wanting to apply for a job for. Like that's one of the first things Brad brings up in Damn It, Janet, isn't that he wants to get married and have a family and have kids and marry it's, a wife yeah, and it's like, buy a house. Ralph's getting a promotion, you know? Yes. So I think he too sees getting married as an opportunity to elevate in status and hopes that talking to Dr. Scott and being like, hey, I'm getting serious. I need to have, I need a job. Unless he's already like in the works of getting a job from Dr. Scott. Maybe. I think, I think that Dr. Scott was using Brad and Janet <laughs> as a lure to find uh -huh. Frank. Yes. I, I could think see that. I, I could there see is that no way more. Yeah. I think I think that this is not the first time that this has happened, but I do okay. think that this is the closest. I think that Frank specifically goes after like these younger, naive people who are just out and about, and he just abducts them and takes them into his castle, and they're just never seen again. And okay, Scott okay. realized this, and he's like, "Okay, we have two fresh, new, baby-faced." children going out <laughs> in love these are prime targets for these aliens i'm gonna put a tracking device in their car and find out where they go New and theory. see if something happens dr scott is a mastermind for sure and i'll tell you why everyone who ends up in this castle seems to have something to do with him mm -hmm. because i think that i think that he did send brad and janet out there like 
he like mm -hmm. fucked up their car on purpose so they would have to go into the castle and or he, he had gave already... them the directions that yeah. led them to the dead end and it's something because you see brad paying so much attention on the drive mm -hmm. to the point where he's ignoring his girlfriend who he could be having a conversation with yeah. he's like very focused so he can know where to turn and, and it feels like he did go in the right direction which might have been a trap he already sent Eddie, I think. He he sent Eddie as his first like agent to like figure things out. Things went wrong, you know, like Eddie got his brain split in half. Mm -hmm. You know, like I mm -hmm. could totally see that being like like Brad and Janet or like Dr. Scott's second attempt to learn about these aliens and like Ooh. figure out their technology, you know? Like he wanted to learn about like the the teleporter and you know the, yes uh, the, <laughs> you actually segued that perfectly because my next question was how does mm. dr scott know about frank like what how is does, their awareness okay. what level okay. is their awareness of each other how does he recognize the beam of pure antimatter on site you know <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a great point he's like there it is that's the technology i'm here to steal <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> yes like, he's actually really familiar with this alien technology like he knows what it is like he mentions everything like like he's like oh yeah i know what this is like i heard about okay. it okay oh, okay like, it's time it's time it's okay. time please so i'm, the, I'm the ready i'm so ready the reason that dr scott <laughs> recognizes all this technology is not because it's alien it's nazi tech uh wait for it wait and for it it's gonna make frank, sense frank yeah. is isn't an alien He's an ex-Nazi scientist. Both of them are. Both of them are ex-Nazi scientists. So back, back, back during World War II. Okay, hang on. Let me pull up my notes. Okay, so back during <laughs> World War II. It. I love it. I love it. Oh, so I'm here during, for it. So, so back during World War II, right? Frank and Dr. Scott were working in the same labs, right? He okay. was actually they, they they were they were just scientists. Okay, Frank <laughs> was probably like like closeted gay or something like that and then just one day he just gets up and abducted by aliens okay he go gets taken to transylvania and then he oh my god <sighs> okay i'm getting i'm getting too excited I need, I need, I need to calm myself down. <laughs> i'm getting really excited too okay i'm uh, along for it okay so dr scott and frank ex-nazi scientists right yes dr S or frank and Furter was developing mind control technology using pheromones, which is what, what's, the, what's the perfume he uses? 1711? 4711. 4711. And that's, I think, I think that that is the, 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 the hormone mind control device that he uses to like lure in these people. And that's the reason why he was abducted by these aliens to help perfect it. The aliens granted him immortality somehow. Uh, that's why he's still <laughs> young in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> my my tin my tin foil cap is on pretty hard right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm tightening mine. I'm ready. What does Scott say to Frank when they first meet? We meet at last. Is bugging you. Exactly. I know this was bugging you in one of the episodes, Katie. He he says that and they know each other. Scott yeah. says that because he's here to kill Frank because he knocked up his sister and Eddie is Frank's kid. Oh my yes. gosh! <laughs> Thank you! Ricky! Is that really <laughs> what you think? Yes, that's what oh I think. My... Edwina. No, Edwina Von Scott. Yup. <laughs> I that I don't know I don't know about Frank I'm giving I'm I'm giving a standing ovation for this one. I <laughs> no I, I don't I don't yep. for Eddie, it. I don't think Eddie's Frank's kid because first of all he's it's heavily implied that he's banging Eddie when when yeah, that's fine. Columbia is having a well rant. he also he bangs also bangs Rocky. Rocky his child yeah his creation Rocky's Frank yeah, doesn't Rocky give a was shit was made in a lab he's not his like actual <laughs> son but, well like, to a scientist to a scientist wouldn't that seem like the exact same thing. No, that's that's totally yeah. different from like. Mm, well, no. he's also that's been bad. brainwashed. If he, in that case, he is a human, and he. Uh, and he's post lobotomy too. He has half mm -hmm. a brain. Left. No, like for, no, no. The reason Doctor Scott was after Frankenfurter is because he had all of this like future technology, 
you know, and like he has to get it from him. And that's what he's mm-hmm. interested in. Like he's always like every time he sees like the technology, you know, good. Heavens. What if it's compounded <laughs> that he has to get revenge for his sister and exactly. he wants the technology? I don't know. About it could be system. both. The US government. He's he's in the FBI. He's tracking these aliens. He's he wants this alien tech. He's and also like like frankenfurter's out of control you know like so he could get in there get into the the castle get frankenfurter killed make it not his responsibility slip out with the tech or at least like get a good look at it you know and that's just, a good like, point what's what's because... a good look gonna do to a fucking three-pronged dildo okay. <laughs> how is he gonna yeah now is he gonna know what tech is actually in the anti-matter ray gun. I don't know. By just looking at it. Stuff. He was here to snatch some tech. I <laughs> mean, he did have the uh, magnifying glass and he was examining that joint pretty thoroughly. <laughs> Maybe he was also examining some documents. Mm. That's true. Him and Brad were very unconcerned when Janet was being chased. They did go directly to the lab instead of going to help Janet. Hmm. What do you think about that? Okay, because mm. Janet is running up the stairs as a concerned boyfriend. Wouldn't you run after her and like up the stairs and try to rip Frank off of her? Right. It's like, no, this is our one chance to get into the laboratory. Let's go, yeah. let's go, let's go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. He was there. <laughs> no, but I like the idea that they've known each other or at least knew about each other, you know, mm-hmm. all along. We meet at last. I, I think. I and uh, it, it also it also kind of brings heat it, like like some some credit to when uh, Frank says I'm indeed grateful to you and your brother Riffraff for abducting him, taking away from uh-huh. this whole life that he was living, and giving him a new life, basically basically rebirthing him into what he is today now. And in well, that's interesting credits. then because it would give reason for why he brings Columbia into it and why it's not mm-hmm. just like an alien only thing. Why he's exactly cool with bringing humans on is if because he can't he can't fuck the aliens. He and, doesn't have uh, alien genitalia. Doctor, he needs he needs to fuck humans. In the opening credits in science fiction double feature, Doctor Scott is described as a rival scientist. Yes. Which implies, like, they ha- they have to have known each other to have a rivalry. Yeah, I'm buying. I just want to know if if Doctor Scott knows where Frankenfurter's castle is and has been like observing him this whole time, or like mm-hmm. you're totally right that he. Then the coincidence would be how he got the note. Okay, I I know I know exactly how we got that note. Okay. Oh, you and know you exactly talk- how you guys you got- were. You guys were talking about this. You guys were talking about this. You okay. said that you thought that Rocky wrote the note, right? Okay. Rocky did write the note, but it wasn't Rocky's brain that was writing the note. Ooh. It was yes. Eddie's brain. Oh. Yeah. Oh. See? Okay. See, and then if he like is in the lab, he might be. Well, okay. I have a different theory on it now. Oh, really? It's that Riff and Magenta wrote it in ketchup. <laughs> Why? To like... Why? What? Okay. And Let's that's hear. them trying to cause chaos is like they know, but that would mean they had to know Dr. Scott. Exactly. They had to know that he was, it, it actually, so, okay. If Riff and Magenta send the note, to Dr. Scott, it lends more to the theory that Frankenfurter is Eddie's dad um, because it would mean they know the connection and the association and to ask him to be here at this time. And I think mm-hmm. that would ex- that would explain like, yeah, Riff, Riff and Magenta realize Brad and Janet are there. It's the perfect opportunity to cause even more chaos and insanity so they're like, cool, mm. add another member to the party. It'll get Frankenfurter really thrown off and flustered. And then, oh, that's funny that Brad and Dr. Scott know each other. And that's like unexpected to Riff and Magenta. So it's mm. like, oh, that's a fun twist to them. But then it's like, is it double layered where then Dr. Scott has been sending lures 
to the house all this time. We're, we're too many layers of tinfoil hat down. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we need no, we need to we're, we're so close. No, we're so close. We're so close. Me. We're about to figure this out. I, I refuse to believe that there's like a deep like underlying mystery in this movie. It's just a oh a no, there horrible... is we need to make it though. We need to make it. <laughs> yes. What are, you, what are you talking about? We of need answers. Not, there is no subtext. I need it's answers really to my bad own movie. <laughs> I need like Jim Sharman or Brian Thompson or Richard O'Brien to explain to me the strange science and like how the Medusa, D Medusa, Re Medusa. Okay, I also know how that works. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys, you, I'm assuming you guys have seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, correct? Yes. yes. The TV ray. It's what? The TV the ray. The TV ray. They're literally just replacing the molecules that are in the human body with stone. They're just like switching them. So then uh, where do Brad and Janet go? Right. <laughs> their meat yeah. is just in the, their meat is just in a pile <laughs> somewhere else. We're too far. We're too, we're too many <laughs> Their meat right. is just somewhere else. Well, no, if they're, they're blowing my mind, and now you're audio they get sent to physio, another physio molecular transport device. Physio yes, molecular transport okay. device. They are moving. Okay, it's what if they? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. If they are getting sent to another place at that point. I really like that idea of them all getting temporarily transported to Transylvania. Ooh. And there are stones all over the place. Stones, LOL. <laughs> There's statues all over the place of other people, people who have been who've been sent to Transylvania. Like the well-hung speakers. Yes. Yep. And then if when they come back. It's their experiences post being abducted of like oh, Janet oh feeling God. released and really enjoying the the trip versus he, Brad feeling like I can never unsee going to another planet. I can never mm -hmm. like my life will never be go back to the way it was because I now know that another galaxy is out there. How how do they act immediately after they've been demeduced? They start singing. It's floor show. It's floor yeah. show. They go. They go fucking ape shit. What? Okay. I, I'm. I, I'm. I'm buying this shit. They're, uh -huh. they're sent. So they're sent to Transylvania. Uh -huh. Who knows what the fuck they see over there? Or if they're being. What if they're post lobotomied? What if they got lobotomied over there? And and this yeah. is them just be in a loopy stupor, just fucking prancing around on stage. Yeah, yes. or they got like I, I've always wondered how they transitioned from the everybody turning against Frank to like literally sucking his literal dick, you know? Yes. And like suddenly they're all cool yes. with him again. They are about to fight him and they come out of it and they're they are aware that they're in the floor show. Mm -hmm. You were talking about how Dr. Scott recognizes the antimatter ray gun mm -hmm. on first first glance. Yeah. Why? Why? Because he's, he's trying because to he helped develop it. He's been spying. Oh, that too. I he, I, see, this is my theory. Again, him and him and, and Frank developed this tech and possibly Frank stole it. Maybe he stole it when he was abducted or the alien stole it with him. And that was like the only prototype. Hmm. And he wants it back. I'm not hmm. mad at this theory at all. Exactly. See? Frank was never an alien theory. Nope. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm into and it. And he's just adopted their ways. He went, he yeah. is like he was, what Columbia and Janet too come there, out of their like trance. There, There is a major theme of like death and rebirth in this movie. Uh -huh. Frank, fr fucking Rocky is born. Eddie is killed. Fucking both Frank okay. and Rocky die. Uh -huh. Ricky, the Jan fact that Janet this is movie reborn as a theme. No, stop. <laughs> this is not cinema, Ricky. This is fucking. Okay, Walter, rock. you can. Uh, a theme suck, of death and rebirth. Suck Get the my fuck out of here. Dick. What do you think? Suck my. What do you mean? There's no theme in this the, movie besides being. The writing's stupid. on the wall, Walter. 
the writing's on the wall. It's a it's a fucking you're goofy too, sex you're too comedy. Dumb to it's, see it. <laughs> I just love hearing there, it you was not, trying to convince okay. Walter. It's so okay. I'm again here for it. I will believe okay, all your conspiracy theories, but I will not <laughs> believe that this movie has subtext. I just I think it does. I think it does because the doesn't that mean probably that there is intended. subtext? No. If we're coming up with all these wild conspiracies. No, there. You know what? I'll take it all back. There is no subtext. Was this, okay, so what? What was this? Why was this movie made then, Walter? Was it just supposed to be like a look for gay fun? People yeah, for fun. Yeah, no, for they real. Made Richard, this movie for fun. Richard O'Brien was a nerd for like 1950s and 40s sci-fi, and he wanted to make a tribute to it. That that's the reason the movie exists. Except for he like is like a weird like gay man, and so he <laughs> he put his spin on it, and it went mm-hmm. so horribly wrong <laughs> that it was perfect. <laughs> so. <laughs> So do you prefer, uh, or what are your thoughts on, you said you hated shock treatment. Did you shock earlier? Treatment? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I hate shock treatment. Like, like not even like the way, it's not like Rocky where I'm like, oh, it's a bad movie, but I love it. Like shock treatment, mm-hmm. like I just, the first, my first attempt at watching shock treatment, I actually literally fell asleep. Like I, I like some appliances started talking and, and that's, the last <laughs> I, remember. I don't know. There was, there was like a, I, I can't describe it. It doesn't sound I, like I you made remember. it very far. I didn't make it that far. I got I got <laughs> so the, bored. I was minutes. like, it's like all all the poor quality of Rocky Horror with none of the like charm, you know, it just it felt dead to me. It didn't feel alive the way Rocky Horror is just such an animated movie. The characters look and act so wackily in Shock Tree. Mm-hmm. It was kind of stiff. The actors were really more stiff. serious yeah i don't know i couldn't take it like it was it was just it was trash i <laughs> i'm glad it i'm glad it's forgotten i'm <laughs> we're what do you think Ricky? Horror. i love you... shock treatment shock treatment <laughs> is, is 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 a fun movie bitchin in the kitchen is the greatest just song of all. it's a fucking Such a bop. Bop. Love... okay if you look <laughs> if you if you look at my spotify rewind for 2019 the entire fucking shock treatment album is on there. The entire <laughs> fucking thing. The I music is incredible. The music is fantastic. The story, I don't really remember much of it, but it was. It's okay. There's I, not I, much of a story, anyways. I, there is. Or is there? I, or is there? <laughs> there's no subtext in shock treatment. There's a, not, there's a Nazi <laughs> scientist in shock treatment. You ever think about that? Could be. Who, who is Bert Schnick? He has the, he has yes. the German accent, right? Nazi mm-hmm. scientist to me. That's it. Was another one, you know. He worked with Scott Could and be. Frank. Okay, yeah. And and the, that the, would also these Transylvanians have a fascination. Why he's Nazi a different scientist. person, and he's like if he's on the team, the same team as Frank and Doctor Scott. Oh, Janet, are you decent? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Nation is like, stop being a perv. Get out of here. <laughs> Bye. Get out of here, Bert out of here anyway uh do you think or why or how long do you think the transylvanians have been on earth and observing humans at least since world war ii hmm. i have no idea you're stick you're no. just like my theory has a foundation yeah, yeah it and does i <laughs> All because Scott knows Frank. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- explain yeah. that. What do you think, Walter? <clears throat> I'll buy World War II. I never What really if the dinosaurs were gay? What if the dinosaurs what were if, gay? Huh? What, what if, if what if what if the Transylvanians were fucking the dinosaurs? They've they been here. All they shape shifted into them. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> then the other thing is they're the floor show goes on and you are also talking about the audio physio molecular Molecular. transport device exactly and are either of you guys watching wandavision no i don't even know what that is fill me in um i'm not like an uh, avengers or marvel fan okay walter did you ever watch did you ever watch avengers yeah you know you know scar red scarlet the 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 Scarlet witch lady Witch. with the red magic, mm-hmm. the red yeah. magic, you know, robot man. 
with the with the jam <laughs> in his forehead. Yeah, Funny colored guy. Like, yeah, they they like fucked or something. They fucked or something. And this new show is about like her head canon of they lived in the fifties. I think I haven't watched the show, but this is what I understood. So it is. Um, I I I'm feeling the same hesitation to say that I like it as like most people feel about Rocky Horror because like it's a MCU. Yeah, I know story, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's <laughs> so in the latest episode, I don't want to spoil it, but a character brings out a physiomolecular device. No. And it says it physiomolecular. And you know what it is? It's a TV. Okay. A physiomolecular. What I say? What did I say? Willy Wonka and Rocky Horror take place in the same universe. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is over. <laughs> and Frank no, stole this... the tech. He stole the tech <laughs> from Willy Wonka to and break gay people. <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Rocky Horror Picture Show take place in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. Confirmed hey, by WandaVision. Saying, all I'm you, saying <laughs> is that Gene Wilder okay. was also in Young Frankenstein. That's all well, I'm saying. Well, it's, here. I'm it's, it's like over. if they're. It's over. What if they're being transported, like broadcasted on the floor show and they're performing like a reality TV show being broadcast back to Transylvania? Too many tinfoil. There's so I much tinfoil right now. There's nothing in the movie <laughs> to indicate this at all. We've done five layers. Wait, of yes, there is, yes, there is. So, yes, there is. There's the broadcast tower, the RKO broadcast tower that's beeping and it has the flashing it's light. It's currently projecting. Yes. And the monitors that are strategically placed all around the castle because they're being monitored at all times. So what's saying? that the Transylvanians on transsexual aren't also getting that same broadcast. And it's like The Bachelor. The Bachelor. Or the bat, like, <laughs> you know. Frank end up with? Right. It's a reality oh. show, or Big Brother. They're watching a cast of characters get into hijinks and what's gonna happen, hmm? And that's why the criminologist is, is talking directly to the camera also? over and over Therefore, again. Therefore, the Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> is a reality show that takes place in the Willy Wonka <laughs> slash MCU combined universe. <laughs> okay, but hear us out. Our overarching out, theory, <laughs> our overarching theory of this entire podcast is everything is Rocky Horror. What is reality? <laughs> what is reality <laughs> everything is rocky horror like literally watch any movie that was made after rocky horror watch any tv show that was made after rocky horror and you can find similarities mm -hmm. yeah i'm telling you physio molecular i was literally just like watching this show and i and she was like get me or it's that there's so the 50 sitcom right yeah. that is like a signal uh you're getting too heavy into it i haven't watched it yet yeah you guys need to watch it you need to watch See? it because they say that there's a physiomolecular device and i think that's what dr scott is talking about is like See? we're working on televisions we're working on mass broadcasting mass mass programming mass advertisement this because... is the problem with nerds <laughs> it's that Fuck off, Walter. You, look, I'm saying like a filmmaker can't even put like a little reference into something without <laughs> a fucking theory. Like you can't, you can't just be like, hey, remember the physio molecular transport device? Like in Rocky, ha ha, cool. And then people are like, <laughs> combined universe confirmed. You know, like Richard <laughs> Bryan was like RKO, you know, just like in those old sci-fi movies, right? Isn't that cool? Isn't that a cool little- Broadcast answer? tower. Uh, okay, people okay, are like, this is a broadcast Walter. tower going to outer space in the Marvel Walter. Cinematic Walter. Universe. And Willy Walter. Wonka Walter. is controlling it. And <laughs> Ash Ketchum was in a coma the whole time. <laughs> Walter, there's a difference between people who believe that and people who do this for shits and giggles. 
Oh my god. <laughs> we can do this for shits and giggles, okay? That's that's mm-hmm. what I that's what I've been doing. This is what I've been doing this entire week, okay? What is but what is reality? Okay. But what is reality? But what is reality? <laughs> everything play, like play the cosmos intro theme right now <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh my god wrong wrong okay show. i have i cosmos have too. one more like content question for you and then i have a different question for you and then i have a different question for you okay okay <laughs> so what does magenta's like place in it all why is she significant for the mission why does she need to be there I don't know. I don't know. She's just keeping an eye out. I guess I guess there's nothing she can do that Riff couldn't also do. I don't know. She's there to outnumber Frank if he gets to. <laughs> he Literally to for back, mutiny purposes. Like, exactly. She really doesn't do anything the entire movie. Honestly. She observes. Yeah. The, the voyeurism. Uh-huh. Is a, is a, over thing of uh-huh, yes uh-huh. um i don't i never thought about magenta really i don't think about magenta much like she's there yeah but she's also like far and wide people's favorite character like i thought frankenfurter was people's favorite character what? people like magenta <laughs> Yeah, it's the yes. hair. People dude. like statistically, her, her we've design. made polls on our Instagram and like we and other like on the Facebook fan groups, other people post polls that we watch because good data. Um, and like <laughs> far and wide, Magenta is like, if not the top, she's second. She's or maybe Columbia will edge her out. Maybe. Well, people do love an edgy goth GF, so of course. maybe that's why. <laughs> She's well, then GF. also she in the original stage show would sing the opening number hmm. and she would come back and sing the closing number. So I guess the story with the stage show is that hmm. she's an usherette who has a dream and it was all a dream and it's all from Magenta's perspective and she's just watching. Walter, this is canon from the original stage show. What if Ash Ketchum <laughs> was in a coma the whole time? <laughs> this is canon from the original stage show. Yes, is and she canon? went, she oh comes, God. she has her whole sci-fi fantasy and has all of the experiences that she wants out of reliving her favorite movies. And so, so Magenta gets to that. live out her sci-fi fantasies but then there's like a meta thing of shadow casting and of <clears throat> mm-hmm. people performing their favorite movie mm. and it being in magenta performing her favorite movie. If the movie is actually magenta replaying her favorite movies. And that's why she you says, mean, let's do the time warp again, restart the VHS. Let's do it again. I mean, she, but she's not really like, I mean, oh, I was going to say like, she's not really like, reliving them because she's not doing anything she's not a part of the actual story until like the very end she's, exactly. she's she's re-watching. observing she's re-watching it yeah magenta Maybe? confirmed fan fiction author this magenta is- confirmed god is she like she is the lips at the beginning of the movie show us oh god. god yeah you know? So is this literally um, like a story being told from her mouth? Yeah. Like a word just of, saying. like, this is just mm, interesting. Right? Interesting. Just saying. Right? Okay. Interesting. So you guys are shadow casters. Yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Not right now. Do you but, have you know. <laughs> a Not favorite shadow casting moment that, like, sticks out in your memory? <sighs> You're like, oh, that was iconic i always remember that show what do you think iconic moment having pretend sex with you in apple valley (laughs) (laughs) thanks i'm I'm glad to be part of that memory (laughs) not trying to flatter you or anything that sounds like absolute ass kissing like why it was with (laughs) you of course (laughs) 
no but seriously that was such a good show and that was like my favorite part of that show was like the the three-way two rockies one janet like out in the open blistering cold nipples <laughs> in the wind it wasn't even that <laughs> it was really cold it was, it was, cold. Get, get, it was like january wow. was it yeah i think i think it was like november oh, but cool. still it was cold times anyway yeah. well uh, i that, that is a good fun. moment i like that moment ricky the first time i ever did the uh, the water bit with you i was literally <laughs> that was that was an off the cuff thing too because i was just coming down the railing from from there uh-huh. the light when when brad goes through the gate right and i saw the transylvanians in the aisle just squirting the squirt bottles at people and uh-huh. i was like hey i just walked up to one and i was like hey squirt me in the face <laughs> and they squirted me like once or twice and I was like this isn't enough more no, no, no more. Do it. I, was, I was screaming at them in the aisle being like more squirt me in the face like you mean it you know and then I and I crawled on the floor and then I met back up in the middle when when Brad and Jan do the the chorus line and I thought that was the funniest shit <laughs> I agree because also- it and then I, when you do it again, like it still surprises me every time yep. I expect it, but it's also, <laughs> it's so, it's nice to turn around and see. It's so funny. See me I wet, love that yeah. bit. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, but it always cracks me up. It always makes me laugh. Yeah, that show and also the time, the, 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 have you guys participated in, in an April Fool's show? <laughs> no. A long time ago. A I long time ago. <laughs> The first time I ever did Trixie was the first and last time I have ever done Trixie <laughs> was at Yet. an April Fool's show. We'll do it again. And I was I was not prepared. All I had, all I all literally what I did is I went up on stage with fishnets under my pants and angrily took <laughs> off my clothes. There's photos <laughs> online of me just like just it just pissed off being Trixie because I never wanted to do Trixie because I don't see myself as that like kind of person and Rachel mm-hmm. was just like <laughs> you fucking moron <laughs> I'm not that you're guy. gonna be tricky <laughs> and I was just so mad and everybody <laughs> thought it was hilarious including me okay when and I, I will I, never forget that <laughs> one April Fool's we all got to be uh a randomly selected character from like a hat and I was like praying to God that I got Janet and when it landed on Janet I did like a triple backflip off the stage and I was like (laughs) yes I I put on Audrey's Janet costume on the spot somehow my titties are bigger than hers so my jokes (laughs) were just popping out of her (laughs) out of her pink jacket (laughs) just (laughs) my meaty cleavage (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just exploding out on there i was uh, that was so much fun dressing up as janet with my new balance sneakers on <laughs> <laughs> i'm oh telling you God. i need to see this look next weekend okay. yeah this, oh yes. <laughs> this podcast <gasps> is sponsored by new balance <laughs> <laughs> and nord vpn and nord please VPN. pay us <laughs> you have a patreon <laughs> I mean, yes, yes. but it's, uh, we don't have any patrons and it's also not, yeah, we also don't really post much on it because Mm. we don't have any patrons. This is the part where we would shout out to our patrons, (laughs) but we don't have any yet. So if you want to hear your favorite podcasters, read your name out loud on the next episode. I'm Warp Radio. Sign on to Patreon for as little as $5 a month because we don't have a $1 tier because we're not strippers. Don't throw us. <laughs> Pull out the fat bills. We're <laughs> this is where you can hear your name. Um, I don't know. Frederick Dinkelberg. <laughs> this could have been your moment. Now open. That's the best ad I could have ever um, n- ever asked for. So thank yes. you for that. <laughs> oh my It'll gosh! Happen. It'll happen. Yeah, it's It'll fine. Be fine. We're fine. Someday. We love it. We love doing it. So it's it's mm-hmm. yeah. it's a fun podcast to listen to. I I, I say this from thank experience because I've listened to every episode. Aww. Oh, thank you, thank in- you, including this one technically. 
Here's I'm ahead of everybody true. else. I'm ahead of everybody else. Fuck everybody you're else. You're technically like a bu- you're better than a Patreon right now because yeah. you're you're getting you're advanced, early, advanced. early, early, early access. You guys, you guys were on my uh, oh, my yeah, uh, my Spotify Rewind for this year. That's my top podcasts. I saw that made me so happy. <laughs> Well. Here's an idea. Patrons can get access to the video version of the podcast. Or, and or. they can see the weird little pimple on the middle of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> they can stare and at my, my the antlers in my room. My feet are in this podcast. Uh, I think <laughs> they make the, an appearance as a growth on your shoulder occasionally. The bottom half are worth at least like fifteen dollars a month. You know, like. That's, <laughs> You Come can on. see uh, Ricky's nostrils and um, check and see if you see any boogers. Oh like God. he's all clear from my. Yeah, same. Yeah. I so think this good. is patrons only clean. content. Exclusive content. Exclusive. But, uh, yeah. You guys are so funny. Okay. Wrapping it up. I got your favorite shadow casting moment. And now I have kind of, now that you've been think you've been stewing in it for a while. Mm-hmm. Ricky and Walter. What yeah. do you think Rocky Horror means? I think that a nerd <laughs> was looking at all his favorite sci-fi movies <laughs> like, I could do that. And it turns out he couldn't. And that's, <laughs> he botched the job magnificently <laughs> and made the worst science fiction film <laughs> Of possibly all history. <laughs> That's what Rocky Horror means. <clears throat> well said. <laughs> Ricky? Okay. Um, so I, I really loved your episode with Jim O'Kane. Um, that man, uh-huh. that man's very intelligent. And I yes. like to hear him speak. And I really, really, really liked his answer when he said that Rocky Horror is a place for Saturday nights, just like just like Hoppa Tootie says, whatever happened to Saturday nights, you know, I never I never had those Saturday nights growing up. I was mm-hmm. like the I was the nerd kid. I hung out in the library with my friends and we never did anything on Saturday nights because we never got invited to parties. We didn't go to the movies. We just were online playing video games and all that shit. And the, Rocky is, was like my first experience with like. Uh, what a Saturday night should be when you're younger. It's like going out, hanging with your buddies, causing a, causing chaos just everywhere causing you go. Causing a ruckus. Crack, causing a ruckus, making 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 weird jokes, being being fucking delinquents and having <laughs> fun. That that's what a Saturday night should be, and and that's He's... that's that's where I learned it at Rocky. His respect for the show is like orders of magnitude over mine. I'm just like <laughs> completely flippant. I'm like a man fucked up making a sci-fi movie and that's how we got Rocky. And then 40 years later, here I am shaking my titties. <laughs> these are the kind of these are the kind of people you meet at Rocky, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it, yes. It, 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 there are yes. so many there are so many people from from completely different like life backgrounds and everything who just come to rocky and and it's 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 amazing i wouldn't have met malter i wouldn't have met you guys if it wasn't for right yes ricky i thought that same thing too yes because it means a lot to me but i'm not ready to put it into words yet do it you made me you made me put it into words. Fuck you. You'll, You'll have, have to wait till the end. we need to have a finale okay you'll have to wait till the end yep uh i guess i gotta keep listening <laughs> <laughs> you guys want. have been just like the most hilarious uh, time <laughs> you. ever is there anywhere that like you want to plug your social media or anything like that uh yes uh <laughs> <laughs> after 500 years i should have prepared some- <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> i've been on youtube since 2008 since i was a tiny tiny baby uh, and then I stopped making videos for about 700 years. And um, I recently brought my YouTube back from the grave. And uh, mm-hmm. some uh, I lost like thousands of subscribers over the four-year term where I wasn't uploading anything. Can so, you blame them? 
I can't. Yeah, I know. I wasn't uploading. So, you know, but, uh, <laughs> I brought it back and you will remember the name because it rhymes. It's Asshole Patrol. It is Asshole <laughs> Patrol. It is <laughs> sounds <laughs> like the name of a gay porn star, but believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> The show's only a little gay. So uh, just <laughs> check out my vlog. Uh, I just talk a lot of shit uh, and I try and make it as entertaining as possible. Uh, so <laughs> Asshole Patrol on YouTube. Also, if you're into Facebook meme lords, uh, the fantastic bro moments to the crimes of Beefman and Post Physique, the Cope Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm on I do all love Post Physique. It is strangely wholesome. It is, right? My like, <laughs> my, like cyber bully bodybuilding <laughs> page is like yeah. somehow wholesome. <laughs> like people get really angry and do like angry internet things. And then you're like, show physique. And then they do. And you guys are like, okay, cool. And then that's it. And that's how, the, that's how it resolves. And I'm like, like, oh yeah, you do have a nice body. Thank and the, you. Like, thank you. Wholesome. <laughs> wholesome. Love it. Nice pecs, bro. <laughs> yeah. um i'm i'm ricky underscore Bellardi b-e-l-a-r-d-i on literally everything uh don't go to my twitter because there's nothing on there uh instagram uh facebook is just my name uh dm me if you want to play video games uh that's 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 the thing i like to do yeah okay. you can play with me and walter if you're gonna get a war zone you should do a twitch the two of you oh, i should <laughs> You guys right. are the best. I appreciate Thank it you so much. A lot. Love we guys. love you. Yes. Thanks for having us on. Thanks so much to Ricky and Walter for talking with us. And thanks to you for tuning into this special presentation. And don't forget, on, on Wednesdays, Wednesdays, we, we watch, watch Rocky. Rocky. Bye. Bye. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps us out. And we appreciate all your feedback. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.